We are live. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so uh, as uh, as we've been t we were talking about before we actually got in, uh, the one constant in the universe and the constant for Passion of the Nerd, this YouTube channel, is technological issues. It's a glitch in the matrix, man. Yeah. So welcome, everyone, again. Uh, welcome, sir. Mr. Hello. James Leary. Um, Hi. Before we get started, I wanted to run down real quick some details about WeedonCon itself. Um, WeedonCon is in Los Angeles this month. It's going to be May 18th Ooh. to the 20th. Woo woo. Uh, proceeds go to charity. The two charities this year are uh, the Lupus Foundation of America and the um, Al Wooten Heritage Center in honor of Ron Glass. Uh -huh. Now, uh, the organizers of this particular con stress... Um, more of an intimate setting. It's a smaller car. Very intimate. Very intimate. intimate. Like this. <laughs> this is how intimate it'll be. It'll be like this. Hey, I, I'm into that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very intimate setting. Lots of opportunities to mingle with guests, uh, one of whom is yourself. Hi. Hi. Thank you for being patient. Um, oh, my pleasure. Uh, I appreciate it. Now, um, this isn't your first Whedon Con rodeo. No, it is my second time around. And from your point of view, how is the con different from other cons? Um, the, the one big difference is that it is set in L.A., so um, you kind of never know who's going to drop by. Uh, hmm. it, it's very interesting. I know the, the one I went to two years ago, there were some surprise guests, um, and I could try to tell you who some surprise guests would be, but... We don't know. They're surprises. Um, so that's one thing that makes it different because we're in the, the, the city that most everybody lives in. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a much smaller uh, event um, being specifically for charity. Um, so, you know, you get a much more inclusive um, experience. Awesome. And it, you've done this quite a bit. You're an old pro at, at, at <laughs> yes. the, the con yes. scene. What's mm. it like, in your experience, what's it like to interact with guests in a close setting like that as compared to... Um, I, I like it a lot more. Um, it becomes, it feels less like, um, like, like an assembly line of autographs almost <laughs> um, where people are just in line to kind of get a piece of paper signed in their five seconds experience with someone. Um, and it's more you can, you know, there's... there's the, you know, the meet and greets and, and events with certain actors sharing their passions. And you just get a, a much more well-rounded uh, event. Awesome. Uh, I understand you You mentioned you were a fan of the show um, mm -hmm. Buffy uh, mm -hmm. before becoming a part of it. Uh, I, I was. I'm very much a fan as well. I have spent uh, some, uh, some years now uh, doing this episode guide for the show. <laughs> Uh, what does the what does Buffy mean to you? When what drew you into it? When did you become a fan of it? Gosh, I I was in Chicago, so I was just starting out as an actor. I was in Chicago when I first heard that they were making a TV show, and I was one of the few people that saw the movie in the theater. Um, um, and, what, ah, and what what were you feeling? Really, yeah, ah, um, I thought Paul Rubin was hysterical. Uh, so I was like, well, how are they going to make this a TV show? And I knew a bunch of Chicago actresses who were putting tape down for it. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And I remember when it came on, and I was like, I'll just give this a shot. And, it, I, you know, it kind of hooked me. And I was like, yeah, it's all right. And, you know, nothing else fun. <laughs> and then by the time second season rolled around, I was, I was hooked in for sure. The second Spike showed up. Spike and Drusilla showing up, I was in. Yeah. Um, it, it had me. And uh, when I moved to Los Angeles uh, a year later, it was in the top five shows I wanted to audition for. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, I loved it. I even wrote a spec episode. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's... It takes place after the season finale of season two. And, is, is, and can we read that anywhere? God, I would have to... F if you have... Uh, something that could read it off of a, a floppy disk <laughs> and... Um, an old screenwriting program, maybe. The uh, yeah, the the fanfic uh, universe for Buffy is alive and well. There's really mm -hmm. it, it's really unusual how vibrant that community has stayed over time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the important questions: which mm -hmm. which relationships do you ship? No, oh, which relations do I ship? Um, uh, Clem and Faith, of course. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, Clem and everybody. Clem and Spike. Uh, they, they, you know, James and I used to joke around that they'd make a, a funny sitcom based on the Odd Couple. Um, 
I I was definitely a, a Buffy uh, Spike person. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The, you know, Warren. I, I I ship Warren and Skin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's one of the unusual ones I've not heard. Yep. Yep. Uh, I've heard Oz and Xander, but never Warren and Skin. No. Uh, Mr. V- Mr. Geek Freak on YouTube asked in the comics, Clem and Harmony start dating. Yeah. What are your feelings mm-hmm. about that? Do you read the comics? I, I have read. I, I haven't read all of them. I've in full narcissistic um, honesty. I've only read the ones I'm in. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I did know that he and Harmony had hooked up. So uh, Mercedes and I talked about how funny that would be. Uh, <laughs> Last time I saw her at a convention. Huh. Um, so Clem's kind, of, Clem's kind of interesting in that that uh, most I, I think most of what is is captivating about Clem comes from the makeup, his dashing good looks, the makeup design, and you. Yeah, well, uh, in in that he doesn't he doesn't have the same he doesn't have like a, a historical background or, or they, they don't really blow that out, um, and yet he's one of the fan favorites. Monsters yeah. in the series. What, what, what I really kind of it was kind of luck meeting opportunity. I think mm-hmm. um, I was only supposed to be a one off character, five lines, that one episode, poker scene, and done. And I, having watched the show, um, kind of read, knew that you know a lot of times the demons were more human than human, and I just kind of went in and read it like a heightened version of myself. I tried to play as much for comedy as I could, because that's my strong suit. Yeah. And um, the producers in the room laughed, and I ended up getting the gig, and I guess, you know, it's kind of struck a chord with the fans. And that season, season six is is not all uh, unicorn farts and sunshine. No, not at all. And um, I think I provided a, a bit of... Uh, like, uh, naive humor. To the situation, sort of uh, child childlike innocence. Yeah, Clem has yeah. Those... Where he, you know, he's from this dark world and he knows these dark things, but he was just trying to cheer everybody up <laughs> with some cheesy puffs. Um, yeah. And how would you? Uh, did you get a lot of creative freedom with the character? Oh, do I, like no, not a, I mean, it created freedom as far as how I interpreted the character. Yes. Yeah. Um, but pardon the dogs oh. in the background making all the noise. It happens. Um, uh, so as far how as I interpreted the character, absolutely. But you know, on a on a on a Joss show, the the dialogue is Bible. Yeah. Um, so you make sure you hit every comma, every parentheses, every semicolon, dash. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that links. in a number of interviews. Um, uh, what which character from the show did you identify with the most? Everyone seems <laughs> to have a lens into the material. Um, yeah. Who did I identify with the most? You know, it would probably have to be Willow, I think. Interesting. I yeah. Think. And what? Um, just as someone who was, you know, kind of quiet, shy person uh, until they absolutely were not. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. And when they weren't is when they were the most powerful. Um. We were we were reading. Xander is sort of the funny guy on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, tends to tends to deflect negativity with humor. Mm-hmm. And um, in doing some reading, we, we saw another interview where you said it's harder for bullies to hit you uh, if you make <laughs> them laugh. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask how your experience in in life brought you to humor and comedy. Sure. I was um, I was a short, chubby kid uh, growing up. Um, I moved around quite a bit. And I liked dorky things. Um, I was a Star Wars fan. I was like comic books. Um, I was very shy. Kept to myself. Um, was terrified of getting in trouble at school. Um, and you know, right around middle school, I became a target for, you know, the proclivities of jerk middle school kids. Middle school kids like there's a switch that is flipped in the brain that turns everybody into an a hole. Yeah, they're pretty mean. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to play football and I wanted to do all these things. Also, I was very young for my grade. Um, my birthday's in late August. So I was typically about a year younger than everybody else, um, at least six months younger. So in middle school, that makes a huge difference. 
and I just got I got picked on a lot. Uh, my mom dressed me funny. Uh, <laughs> had clothes from from Marshalls and Filene's basement uh, when all the cool kids were wearing wearing polo. Um, and yeah, when I hit high school, I kind of realized that I could make people laugh, and that if I started to make them laugh, uh, it was a distraction from my shoes or what shirt I was wearing or how bad a haircut I had. Interesting. Yeah. And um, did you get into theater at that point? Um, I did. I did. It was something I knew I'd wanted to do for, I, I wanted to perform for a long time. And I, I did theater in eighth grade. The first chance I got, I took a theater class in eighth grade. And um, I did like a little variety talent show there um, that I really enjoyed. I was in front of a big group of people and got a reaction. Hmm. And the first time that happened, I was hooked. Um, so then when I got into high school, I started doing theater and theater competitions and one act play. And uh, that was it. You, you've, you've mentioned that you're big into improvisational comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, what, do you, what do you enjoy about it? What draws you in about that style? God, I, you know, being not great at sports, um, it's like my extreme sports. It, it is... It's always changing. It's never the same. And um, it's kind of... And you have to really depend upon the people that you're on stage with. Hmm. Um, plus, I'm lazy, and I no longer like having to memorize lines. <laughs> so uh, it takes, you know, with a with an improv group, you can you rehearse, you know, once twice a week. Um, or an improv show once twice a week, you're good. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to rehearse five days a week for six weeks to put up a show. Um, so yeah, that's I, I, I like the the ever changing nature of it. Do you uh, do you at some point? And this is for this is this is a selfish question. I'm asking for my own benefit. Do you at some point stop getting stage fright? Does it does it does it at some it, point go away, or do you tr it, do you learn to savor it? It it morphs it from fright into anticipation. Hmm. Um, like I would get nervous. I still get nervous before shows. Um, I get you know I haven't done a stage a regular scripted play in a long time. I would definitely get nervous. Before that, but it was never stage fright. It was always just this anticipation, this um, this building up of energy before going on um, mm. that could sometimes feel like fear. Um, but I don't. Oh God, I can't remember. I can't remember being afraid to be on stage. Interesting. And it usually would go, usually would go away. I think if I did stand up, I would feel that again. Yeah. Because um, that's about the most scary thing I can think of doing. Uh, but yeah, it was always just this this anticipation. And I, 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 I suppose it's like immersion therapy at some point. Where <laughs> you just sort of it, it sort of falls out of your system. And it got well. It just gets to be where you you I would I I, I thrived on it. Hmm. Like it was, I was like my my drug. Uh, what? Oh, sorry, I lost my place here. Um, what would you describe as your brand of humor? Do you feel like it's my brand of humor similar um, to Clem or no? No, I'm I'm way more blue than Clem is. Um, <laughs> my inherent brand of comedy is is <laughs> if there's a line of good taste, I always like to have <laughs> one foot on the other side of the line. Yeah, that, um, that makes sense. Uh, and uh, also, I subscribed to the. Uh, Beating a dead horse, school of comedy. So I'm gonna if I find something that a, an audience, especially an improv, if an audience laughs at, yeah, I will hit that joke till they stop laughing, <laughs> and then I'll hit it until they start laughing again. That's uh, uh, that's very much my own style as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, I grew up on God, I grew up watching Three's Company and Mork and Mindy and Monty Python and early Saturday Night Live. Um, Steve Martin, early Steve Martin, all that stuff heavily influenced sort of my comedic tastes. Gotcha. Um, so bringing it back to Buffy for just a minute, uh, which, mm -hmm. what is your favorite story arc or season within the show? Uh, season? Well, well, season six, of course. I mean, it's the most brilliant <laughs> season th there is, starting specifically with episode five. Yes. Um, uh, season two, I think, is my favorite encapsulated season. I thought what what they did with season two was really pretty amazing. Um, the the metaphors and just the entire arc of that season, tying directly into what it's like to be in high school. Um, the um, uh, I've, I'd never quite seen a show take a good guy 
yeah. uh, to to that degree, and yep. and and have him swap halfway through. Yep. That was that was uh, compelling on a level I hadn't quite experienced in a in a different show. Yeah, I, it was. I was not expecting it, and when it happened, I thought, well, surely they're going to change this back in a in an episode or two. Yeah, yeah, and uh, no. and that 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 ending in in front of a castle of the demon. Good lord. Yeah. I know. Yeah, dude, nothing tears you up quite like that. Um, so it's interesting. But I, my, my single favorite episode is Hush. Yeah, Hush is, uh, Hush is master work. And I, I, I say this. Excuse me one second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and I, and I, may continue. I say this honestly. Uh, season six is actually my favorite. Um, I, I really, um, I, I think there's a, so much amazing stuff going on in season six. Um, that I, I find more every time I kind of go back and, and, and yeah. watch yeah. specific episodes. Um, season six is really powerful. Yeah. The, the existential crisis on, yeah. on screen. Um, so to wrap up, I wanted to ask a couple of specifics about your experience joining the show. What was the, you sure. mentioned the audition, um, uh, how many people were trying out? What was that like? What I have no mean? idea. I, I, um, I had done a workshop with one of the casting associates for the show. Um, and she liked me. Um, so she brought me, I didn't have to do a pre-read, uh, for them. Uh, so I got brought right to producers for the part, which was kind of crazy. Um, and works to my strengths in that I had an audience. Um, I, I always hated the audition process, especially the first round of auditions. And it's it's just you and a person behind the camera and or a casting director, and, and you're just it's a very sterile environment. Um, and I I do better in a room uh, yeah. with feedback. And uh, you know there was a couch full of producers, and I was reading with a casting director. And the second I heard a laugh, it was I was in. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's got to be like a click moment inside yeah. when you get a laugh. So I, I had that one audition, and that was it. I, a couple of days later, I got a call for the part, and then, excuse me, I'm going to burp. Yeah, do it. Lovely. Um, and then I was being scheduled for a, a head cast, um, mm -hmm. which was the first time I'd ever done that. So I had to go do that, which was really cool. Um, and then I showed up on set and I thought that was just going to be it. I was just going to be one and done. And then a few weeks later, I got a call from my agent going, Hey, would you like to go back and do Buffy? I was like, uh, yes, yes, I would. We've re Probably we've not the best negotiating tactic, <laughs> but, uh, um, I just wanted to be back on the show cause I had such a good time. We've read that James, uh, actually said to you afterwards that, that you're going to get a call back. Yeah. So he's, yeah, he's like, so, you know, you, I'll be seeing you again. I was like, yeah, whatever. This guy says that to everybody. Okay. Um, and when I came back, he was like, see, told you. So kitten poker, was it a day of shooting or? It was one day. That was like, that whole scene was shot out in one day. Um, and uh, the kittens were a nightmare. <laughs> An absolute nightmare to work with. Worst Very actors ever. Divas. I mean, just <laughs> unreal. I, how did that? So, how long were you in the makeup chair to for the outfit? That day, uh, since it was the first time applying the makeup, they were kind of figuring it out. So I was in makeup for about four and a half hours that day. I mean, it's staggering um, makeup. Do you, you know what? It was actually not when they got it done. When they got it down, it was usually about three hours, which isn't too bad because it was in large pieces. So it was, it was the cowl from here back, yeah. ears. And then the whole front piece glued to my face. That's what took the longest, just getting it glued to my entire face. Uh, and then they'd have to paint it. Um, so that's what took the longest. But they, but they got that down pre, you know, towards the end, they were having two people work on me at a time. Uh, a menage à clem. And uh, they got that down to about two and a half hours. That it's, you, what's, what I love about that is you speak of that as though it's quick. Uh, two, two and a half, <laughs> well, three hours. People like George in. Hertzberg, who, who was Adam, he was in the chair for five and a half hours, and someone had to help him pee. Oh, geez. So I got off pretty easy. Yeah. Well, they, they certainly did amazing things with prosthetics. Oh, they, they did. It was incredible. Right at the cusp of the digital era. And now yeah. you guys would be in green screen suits. Right. Yeah, um, we'd be all mocapped. Yeah. A bleep bloop on YouTube says any details or tips on how to win at kitten poker? Uh, how to win at kitten poker? Cheat. 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 Have plenty of catnip. Hide, hide the spare card in a fold someplace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, tr 
Trillium uh, from the chat says, what was your favorite scene to shoot or act in on the show? God, I, that's hard to ask because I, I was, I just, I loved every time I got to be on set. Yeah. I, you know, even I spent some time in my trailer. Um, the, epi- the wedding episode was a full week and I had, you know, I didn't have a whole lot to do, but they wanted me around the whole time just in case they needed you in background shots and stuff. And so I, I read a lot during that, that shoot, but yeah. um, all the other episodes, I, I usually hung out on set because I just wanted to watch and 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 take it all in because you know I loved I loved what I did and I liked the whole process. Um, but the the two that kind of stand out for me are the scene um, in Seeing Red where I come. Uh, to Spike's crypt, I the lines in that one were really that was definitely like my sense of humor. Yeah. Um, the, you know, we got issues, Spike. <laughs> um, and the last scene I got to shoot with Sarah, that was kind of they didn't have to bring me back for that. I'm really not important to the plot for that scene. That was, um, was that when they brought in... me back to give me kind of a little goodbye, which was really cool. That was when you were in the car. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just to get to specifically do a scene just Sarah and I was a lot of fun. Did. Um... Did it, so? Words hard. <laughs> the uh, words hard. The uh, did you did you develop a backstory for yourself? I mean, given that Clem was sort of lacking one. No, I I'm very much an actor who uh, is more of a I'm a more of a Meisner actor than a method actor. Gotcha. Um, I kind of and this is kind of how I I approach most everything else I do is I kind of try to take everything I can I take everything I can from the text. I believe that it's all there on the page. Um, no, I just kind of went and was like, I'm just a goofy demon. You know, what kind of backstory am I going to create that's <laughs> going to be more interesting than just playing a scene where I show up at a crypt with a bucket of chicken and talk about a Knight Rider? <laughs> I don't care what backstory I could come up with. It ain't going to be as interesting as what's going on right there. Um, uh, James M. asked, do you think Clem would have gotten along with Lorne? Did you watch Angel? Oh, my God. Lorne, I think I, I wished – it's a huge – I think it was a huge missed opportunity there that that I, I, I won for my pocketbook that I didn't get brought on to Angel. Um, but I, I, Andy and I, I met Andy on the con circuit in Cincinnati in 2003, I believe, uh, at the Mid Ohio Con uh, back when it was independently operated uh, by Roger Price. Um, and I met Andy and Mark Lutz. Mm. And that is one of my favorite con experiences ever. Um, Andy and I hit it off fantastically, and um, he was such a great guy. Um, so yeah, I think Clem and Lauren would have been very good friends. They would, they would have found, they would have found something mm-hmm. to do. The uh, you mentioned Hush too. I love my, one of my favorite details in that episode is that's his first episode. He's one of the the students in the crowd. Oh in the yeah, that's right. Game. That's uh, uh, I love that. Um, Joseph Testa asks, which big bad is your favorite and why? How big bad? Um, God, it's oh, glory, 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 glorificus. Of course, the great glorific. Who she's played by the indomitable Claire Kramer. Yes, Um, uh, who who comes to the Denver Con quite a bit. Which I yes, and you know I love Glory just because the Glory does not make any apologies. She is just she is who she is, and and that's it. Glory does glory. What glory does yes, glory. glory does glory? Yeah, uh, Dave mm, Billet. Sure there's some slash fiction about that. Dave Billet says, if Clem could fit in any other show as a crossover character, not limited to the Buffyverse, uh, oh, which wh- what show would he fit in? What show would Clem fit in? Doctor Who. Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. Um, we're, we're, I'm just going to hit you with a couple of these uh, quick ones. Yeah. Uh, Amber Does Stuff says, what was your favorite joke or quote on the show? I think you may have answered that, but what was your... Of, of mine? Um, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, it's got to either be, um, who issues or you rock. Yeah. Have you, uh, have you read any of the fan fiction? <laughs> uh, I or do you get to had an that experience with, uh, some slash fan fiction early on <laughs> that ha- uh, traumatized me to the point of not really reading any more fan fiction. <laughs> Um, I still can't get those mental images out of my brain. No, fair enough. Well, we are um, we are at the end here, so um, I yeah, uh, that, uh, yes, turns out when you talk about yourself, time goes by quickly. 
It's uh, uh, it's been great. Well, I want to run through some of the details real quick before yeah. we uh, turn the stream off. Uh, if you can, please, because I don't, I, I haven't read my itinerary, so I don't know what they are. So, uh, mention some of the super cool, super fun activities. Yay. Yeah, that, she wanted to make sure that I said super cool, super fun. Uh, super cool, super fun. So I'm just gonna list these off. Uh, Friday night. The fun begins with the sing-song bang at Caritas Karaoke. Awesome. Uh, this is from 8 to midnight. Open to all guests with badge. James will be there. He has I will. I do, I do a, 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 a stirring rendition of Every, one, uh, Every Rose Has Its Thorn by Poison. Well, I was going to ask you what you were going to go for, so mm -hmm. that's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a special luncheon from 12 to 1 on Saturday with Miracle Lori, uh, Christopher May, <sighs> Camden Toy, Tim Desarn, and yourself. Oh, wonderful. Um, entry for this is available on the WhedonCon website, linked in yeah, the so description. Yes, so please buy your tickets. Miracle Lori is a delight. Uh, that same night, there's going to be a Much Ado About Nothing themed formal cocktail party. Oh. The elegant evening reception with all of the con guests. There's limited seating available, so purchase as soon as possible. Well, apparently I need to get new suit pants. <laughs> Uh, that starts from uh, 7 p.m. on Saturday. There will be pins as gifts for the first 25 people to attend. There's also going to be a craft and chat session hosted by... Oh, yeah, I can't wait for that. It's going to be fun. Hosted by Geek Girls Forever, linked in the description below on Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. These guys craft adorable plushie dolls, including yes. Spike and Giles. And this mm -hmm. year, you'll be able to make your own super cute and cuddly Clem plushie. Yes, you'll be able to make your own plush Clem. It's going to be fantastic. While hanging out with James himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, purchase tickets available in the description below. Sunday from 1 to 2, you can join James and some of the other guests for small group gaming sessions. Sort of like Ooh. gaming with the stars type of thing. Uh, uh, are we going to do like Hollywood Squares? Uh, <laughs> we, we were thinking more Cards Against Humanity, but... Oh, Cards Against Humanity. Okay, cool. We'll, awesome. we'll, see, we'll see what we can do with. Uh, we may also have some kitten gambling with yeah. yourself. We will. Ooh, get gambling for kittens. We are we are doing. Uh, hopefully, they'll be a little more um, agreeable this time through. I haven't. Gosh, I haven't played poker in a long time. Uh, this is just now confirmed. Oh, awesome. Um, uh, and uh, gambling with little plushy kittens, and you, <laughs> and you'll be able to get an autographed uh, kitten. Buy this quickly because only ten people will be able to be at the table to play. Ooh, that's it. A very intimate. Celebrity world tour poker the, that's type how, of deal. That's how we like it, right? Um, and of course, you can meet James for an autograph, selfie, or professional Woo! photo op, uh, right. which you can also reserve and buy on the Whedon website. Yes, please go do that. Uh, and that's it. So, I want to thank everyone for joining the stream. Uh, yes, thank you, everybody. James, thank you very much. Uh, My pleasure. I'm very grateful. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut. The All stream right, bye, down. everyone. See you in two weeks. Thank you.